untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white control deck titled Life and Death, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, which features Cosmos Elixir as one of its main card draw engines, the 4 mana rare artifact from Kaldheim, saying at the beginning of your end step, draw a card if your life total is greater than your starting life total, otherwise you gain 2 life, and our deck has plenty of built in life gain to make sure we can play Cosmos Elixir and draw a card in the very same turn where we play it so we get immediate value and then we also have plenty of sweeper effects to keep the board clear to make sure we can keep drawing extra cards with elixir so this is the perfect home for it then our deck also features the giant ox plus colossal plow combo giant ox a two mana 06 that can crew colossal plow all by itself and then the plow a two mana six three creature once it's crewed and then when the plow attacks we add triple white to our mana pool and we gain three life so that life gain also synergizes nicely with elixir and then we can use that mana to ramp out various cards including maybe a Forsaken Monument, which will give our Colorless Creatures plus 2 plus 2, which also includes Colossal Plow, turning it into an 8-5, much more difficult for the opponent to kill in combat, and then whenever we tap a permanent for Colorless Mana, we add an additional Colorless Mana, so all the Colorless lands in our mana base will essentially produce double mana, giving us a nice bit of ramp, and then this also gives us additional life gain whenever we cast a Colorless Spell. We also have plenty of other mana sinks, including Crawling Barons in the mana base, which is also great with both Forsaken Monument and Colossal Plow, as we can potentially crew the plow with our land eventually, as well as using the extra mana to grow Crawling Barons into a bigger creature. And then the plow also plays nicely with our various sweeper effects, since the vehicle won't get destroyed by our sweepers as long as we don't crew it first, and then we'll give us a nice creature that can attack right away, maybe combine a sweeper with playing Giant Ox afterwards, so we can take down an opposing Planeswalker and then add extra mana, so things can easily snowball from there. Then we have four copies of Birth, which on the first chapter lets us search for a basic Plains card and put it into our hand, and we're playing with snow-covered planes in this deck since we have Faceless Haven in the mana base that requires triple snow to be activated, and then also synergizes nicely with Forsake Monument, as well as having two copies of Search for Glory, which gains life if we tap snow mana to cast it. Then on the second chapter we get an 0-4 Colorless Wall, which also gets plus 2 plus 2 from Monument, and can help protect our life total, and then on the final chapter we gain life, which is nice with our Cosmos Elixir. Then we've got four copies of Maze Mind Tome as another card draw engine that eventually also gains for life, so perfect once again. Then our two copies of Search for Glory, which can search for a Snow Permanent card, a Legendary card, or a Saga card and put it into our hand, so this can search up our two copies of Forsaken Monument, maybe an Elspeth Conqueror's Death as a versatile answer that eventually gets a creature or planeswalker back from the graveyard, as well as Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which is one of our main win conditions, which also synergizes nicely in the deck as it won't exile many for permanence with the minus X ability, and then of course Search for Glory can also search up any of our Snow Permanents, including our lands like Faceless Haven, or even a replicating ring, which is up next, a 3 mana snow artifact that taps for 1 mana of any color, so it can fix for white mana, sadly doesn't make colorless mana, so it won't double its mana with Forsaken Monument, but eventually, if we can survive long enough, it will generate a bunch of copies of itself, so we can add even more mana and potentially sink all that mana towards activating our Crawling Barons. Then at 4 mana, besides Cosmos Elixir, the full playset of Shatter the Sky as our sweeper of choice, as well as two complementary copies of a Doomscar, which we can foretell for 2 mana, and then cast for 3 mana afterwards, destroying all creatures. The reason we don't have 4 Doomscars is because we already have a lot of 2 drops in the deck we can cast on turn 2, so we're not taking full advantage of the Fortel ability on Doomscar. And then our two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death, which can get back Ugin as well as Giant Ox, and two copies of Forsaken Monument, which is also legendary, which is why it's nice to have two copies of Monument, as well as two copies of Search for Glory, to search it up if we don't have one already, as opposed to playing four Monuments, which can be awkward if we draw multiples. And then of course our two copies of Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, which can close out the game alongside our creature lands, Crawling Barons especially, quite nice in the deck, if we have a lot of mana to spend on it with our Forsaken Monument, which will also give it plus two plus two, and and then Faceless Haven and needing Triple Snow, and then turns into a 4-3, so with Forsaken Monument it will have 6 power, which is enough to crew a Colossal Plow as well. And then 4 copies of Radiant Fountain, which gains 2 life when it enters a battlefield, so perfect alongside Cosmos Elixir, and another Colorless Land that will tap for double Colorless with a Forsaken Monument in play. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. A birth to find land 3, Search can potentially find land 4 if needed, and then Elixir can start drawing cards. P 
opponent on a Mardu deck. Four colors. Let's get our Haven out there and Birth. Keep as many Snowlands in play as possible for Search for Glory. So we can potentially search for Forsaken Monument. Alright, opponents on the Sanctum deck. So Conquer Zeth can get rid of some of the larger ones. Could play Tomb for now, or we can search up Monuments. I'm pretty likely to Conquer Zeth on 5. Although, it would be nice to have Monument in the back pocket for later. So, yeah, I don't hate uh, searching. Plus this also gains life to set up Elixir better. Alright, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. Sadly, won't be able to exile that this turn yet. But we can play Elixir, which will draw a card. And then next turn, I can Conquer's Death. Either Fruitful Harvest or whatever Sanctum they ramp into here. Which could be the 5 mana Sanctum of All. And then on the turn after, we can maybe go Monument plus another 2 drop. It's going to be Calm Waters, which I don't mind getting rid of. Shut off that card draw. And a Cultivate for more ramp. Alright, so we'll take out Calm Waters, hope that they don't have more Sanctums in hand. We will start losing some life to the Stone Fangs here, but the life gain from Monument should keep our life total high. Make sure to play out as many colorless lands as possible, so we have extra mana for Monument. So, should be able to go Monument into a Maze Mind Tome, which will Gain two life, keep us above 20, so we can keep drawing. Probably not a great matchup for Shatter the Sky. Ooh, opponent's got their own. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. It's probably just gonna plus, so that does shut off the card draw from Cosmos Elixir. That being said. I think I'm still down to play Forsaken Monument as opposed to playing a second Conqueror's Death to get rid of Ugin since we can keep Ugin in play for one more turn. Plus we could also maybe attack him with Crawling Barons, which the opponent won't have an easy time answering. So yeah, stick to the plan here. Play Monuments, play Tomb. And then we'll gain two with Elixir end of turn. And we can scry with Tome to try and find maybe our own Ugin. Just more lands would be fine here. Crawling Barons, Faceless Haven are all decent. Their opponent is now under the Conqueror's Death tax, but they've got all the mana they need. Alright, their opponent doesn't do anything. Might be holding some removal spells. Do I want a Plains? I think I do. Just keep hitting our land drops. And then... What do we want to do this turn? Probably going to have to Conqueror's Death Ugin, or at the very least attack it with our land so it can't ultimate. Just using Conqueror's Death might be safer, even though I would like to keep this for potential Sanctum of All or another Calm Waters. So if I were to activate Barons, I have four. Not quite enough mana to activate two copies. If I activate Haven... I'm also one mana short of activating a Baron alongside it. So that doesn't seem like the best course of action. 
But we could activate one just to keep Ugin in check. And hope the opponent doesn't have instant speed removal for the barons. I guess I can buy that. So we'll start there, and then we can still maybe adjust course here. Send barons at Ugin. Could pump barons again. I think I'd rather get some more mana going. Even if they have Heartless Act, it would still be a 2-2, so they wouldn't be able to ultimate. And then I can go Replicating Ring and still draw with Tomb. Right. Mythos gonna deal with Elixir. Fair enough. Mythos couldn't deal with Crawling Barons. Still have Tomb for a bit of extra card draw, and I'm sure we'll find another Elixir before too long. So we'll draw, and we'll put a stop on upkeep so we can potentially scry as well. Alright, Haven a good draw, so probably no need to scry now. Alrighty, so... Got quite a bit of mana. Could activate double Crawling Barons here. Which might be the better long-term investment. Let's see, one, two, three, four, that should work. Those both at Ugin. Ugin down. Can still scry with Tome if needed. And I'm not too worried about uh, life drain from Stone Fangs. And we managed to save our Conqueror's death for Sanctum of All. There it is. So this turn, do I want to scry? I think we need to keep Tome for actual card draw. So I'll just take my draw step. Plow could be nice. So... Definitely gonna have to Conqueror's Death. I can Plow. Still leaves me with 6 mana. So how about we... Play the Plow. We can activate Crawling Barons. Attack. And Conqueror's Death Sanctum. And then we can use our Crawling Barons or Faceless Haven to crew Plow, although Sanctum of Shattered Heights might have a thing or two to say about that. So they have three Sanctums, so they just need to discard two lands to kill Plow, even with the plus two toughness from Monuments. Although they'll have a harder time killing Crawling Barons. Alright, so... What's the play? I mean, I don't mind my opponent discarding two cards to get rid of my plow. They might have another Mythos for all we know, but I doubt it at this point. They probably would have destroyed Monument. So... I can animate... probably this other Crawling Barons. Which will be six powered thanks to Monuments, and that can crew the plow. which will give us access to more mana. And then I probably animate the other barons as well. And 
we can still draw with Maze Mine too. Opponent lots of attacks, so they're probably not planning to kill the Plow then. And then I can sink more mana into Barons. Alright. Hit them for 20. And should be able to close out the game next turn. So not exactly sure what they're holding, maybe a sorcery speed sweeper like Extinction Event, which didn't line up against what we were doing. But yeah, Crawling Baron's pretty difficult for the five color Sanctum deck to interact with. And we managed to draw our two copies of Elspeth Conquer's Death, which were instrumental in dealing with both copies of the expensive Sanctums. Forsaken Monument gone, but at this point the damage has been done. Alright, center opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine looking hand. Got all the lands we need here between Birth and Ring. Can set up Elixir and then Shadow the Sky to keep the board clear. Radiant Fountain to start drawing right away. Facing Jospera Sentinel, so should be a good matchup for Shatter the Sky. Let's see what else they have. Maybe this is an Elf Tribal deck, maybe this is some sort of uh, party deck. Looks like Elves. Can probably get rid of one land since we're gonna play Ring next turn anyway. Right, another fountain. Might as well. This way, if they play another disciple, I can discard planes. And then we'll see if we need to shatter right away or if we can afford to get Elixir in play first. Yeah, that's gonna make it a lot more difficult. Can take two for now. Our deck's not great at pressuring planeswalkers if we don't have a colossal plow or some of our creature lands. But for now we'll still start drawing extra cards here. And then next turn we can maybe wipe the board. Now that we drew a second elixir, I wanna keep my life total high. So I might jump with a wall. But yeah, the ultimate on Tyvar could be quite threatening. So I need to find an Elspeth Conqueror's Death or search for glory for Conqueror's Death eventually. Or ramp into an Ugin. Although that might be too slow. Alright, Toski. Also quite good here. Indestructible means it doesn't die to shatter. So a lot of threats that line up well against what we're doing. So our best bet here is probably to ramp into Ugin. If I shatter, sure I kill two elves, but that doesn't do a whole lot for me, so I'm probably better off playing another elixir and drawing two. And there's a plow, could maybe be useful. So next turn we can go plow plus shatter maybe. Another Disciple. Mm, do we discard Shatter here? I think I do. It's a bit of a giveaway that we have another one, but so it goes. Your courage is legendary. And then we might as well chum block the largest creature. Alright, 
So I can birth plus shatter, that's probably better than playing a plow that we can't crew yet. And our opponent's probably gonna ultimate anyway here. So we're back up to 22. Can we beat the time for our emblem? It's gonna be tough. But maybe if we find an Ugin eventually, that can stabilize us. Well, our opponent hasn't altered Tyvar yet, so we could maybe punish them if we find an Elspeth Conqueror's death. Alright, I'll get rid of the plow now. Another ring. We get a wall. Don't really feel the need to shatter right now. So I can go tome, draw, see what we get. And then I can still play ring after. Alright, there's Ugin. So that's one way to clear the board here. Although I assume now they will ultimate Tyvar. So they have all the card draw they need. And the haste especially, quite good at pressuring our planeswalker. Master draws two more cards. Can't tap for mana right away thanks to Tyvar's passive. Opponent's gonna have to discard to hand size. They've drawn half of their deck already. Yeah, turn three Tyvar did a number on us, despite having double Cosmos Elixir for card draw. So Ugin is going to minus four here. Opponent's gonna quickly replenish their board and draw more cards. Is this a May ability? It's not a May ability, so there's a chance your opponent ends up decking here. The menacing Harald will be able to finish off Ugin, unfortunately. Finds a Scamfar Shadow Sage, that's also quite threatening. Hasty Visionary. So they still have three mana here for a Scamfar Avenger, which can draw more cards when elves die. So Ugin down can absorb three damage and take two. Question is whether we scry with Tome. Um, there's nothing specific I'm looking for at this point, really. I guess just more sweepers and hope that the opponent eventually decks. 
plus we're pretty close to ring making a lot of mana, which we can then use on Tome to draw extra cards. So I think I'll be patient here. Opponent's got a discard to hand size. And I'll have to wait and see if I want to pull the trigger on Shatter or if we play it slow. And let the opponents commit more to the board first. Opponent didn't want another Toski since they're painfully aware of the possibility of uh, drawing from an empty library. I think I'm just gonna pass and wait one more turn on Shatter. Probably can afford to main phase draw with Tome. Alright, Conqueror's Death could be useful. Could use it on Harald, I suppose, and eventually get back Ugin. And then we'll make the opponent overextend into another Shatter. And the opponent drawing cards with Avengers Death Trigger might actually be beneficial. Uh, binding gonna destroy Conqueror's Death, so that prevents Ugin from coming back. And a second binding probably takes out one of our elixirs. Alright, we'll draw with two. Search for glory. Can search for another Ugin. Could also search for Forsaken Monuments, which can help us with activating Crawling Barons, but we're gonna have a ton of mana with Replicating Ring soon, so I think Ugin's probably our best bet. And then for now we'll pass and we can activate Crawling Barons. Opponent seems unwilling to add more to the board. Can maybe play an Ox, but then I can't animate Barons and Blocks, so we'll pass. And by gaining life with Search, we also drew a card with Elixir. Nineteen cards remain. Eighteen now that they search for two lanes. Right, another adventure. Yeah, interesting game. Harald unites the elves, can get back the planeswalker as well. Although maybe they'll get a Shadow Sage if they've got one. It's gonna be Harald, King of Skemfar instead. Finds a War Master. Alright, so opponent's going wide to set up a potential Shadow Sage. But yeah, all these elves dying with double adventure are gonna draw the opponent more cards, and it looks like they're about to deck. Sentinel. So Ugin would not let the opponent draw cards with Avenger, but Shatter the Sky sure does. Opponent attacks with all. Can animate Barons. And block here, block here. So our opponent's got six cards remaining, and Shatter the Sky is gonna deck them. Yeah, the Tyvar Emblem not being a May ability is what makes a difference here. So Replicating Ring finally reaches 8 counters, and it's time to shatter. Bunch of Scam for Avenger triggers are gonna close out the game here. And there we go, sweet, managed to beat Black Green Elves despite a Tyvar Emblem. 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the play and we've got the perfect hand featuring Colossal Plow into a giant ox with the white mana to play ox as well. And then Cosmos Elixir, a great card to run out afterwards. Facing a turn one goose. All right, hopefully they won't have a creature that can trade for plow. And then we get to go ox, crew plow, play elixir with plenty of life to start drawing extra cards. All right, birth, that's fine. So we get to live the dream here. Get in for six. And play elixir, draw a card right away. Baron's not a bad draw. Let's see if they have an answer for Plow this turn. Potentially four mana thanks to Gilded Goose. Alright, Battle for Breta Guard, so some sort of green-white token stack it looks like. Search can potentially find Ugin, which we can ramp into thanks to Plow. So don't hate that idea. And then... Yeah, we'll crew the Plow. Attack. And then I probably want to use one snow mana on Search for Glory to find Ugin. And then use the remaining mana to put a counter or two on our Crawling Barons. Alright. Plenty of sweepers for the token deck as well, so our opponent's in trouble. They need an answer for Giant Ox so we can't crew the plow and ramp into Ugin. Ugin's minus zero ability can just clean up all the colored tokens. Opponent gonna pass with four mana up. Yeah, we're just gonna crew plow again. And see if we get to make some mana. Alright, Angelic Ascension on the plow, fair enough. So that will prevent us from ramping straight into Ugin. But we're still in a good spot and our opponent had to use Ascension instead of uh, on their creature, on our creature. And then I could foretell Doomscar, I could keep Crawling Barons as an option. Um, probably gonna go with Crawling Barons here. Draw with Elixir. And our opponent concedes since they're so far behind and they know about Ugin in hand. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play once again with a great draw featuring Ox plus Plow. Being on the play also makes this type of hand much better since there's fewer cards our opponent can have to interact with our Plow. Whereas if you're on the draw the opponent might be able to just trade right away, making it a lot less exciting. Opponent with turn one mountain into Hellhound, so mono red. Well, this is probably a good matchup to have some life gain. Not too many three powered creatures that can block plow, maybe the Cargon Intimidator. It's gonna be a Fireblade Charger instead. And a Weaselback, so they can double block plow here, sadly. We could wait. And this turn just play Tome, next turn Shatter, and then play Ox to Crew. That makes sense, I think. Make them overextend. And then on turn 5 I can play Ox to Crew Plow, which will essentially generate one extra mana, which is enough to then ramp out monuments. Opponent's just gonna play it safe to play around a Sweeper, but that's fine. And we want to scry towards... Maybe an elixir, second plow doesn't seem necessary. 
All right, so let's wipe the board here. Could have still gone for the ox into plow with this turn since I didn't have any good blocks. But I don't mind getting rid of three creatures with one card. Opponent's got a good follow up with Fervent Champion. But that's it. So maybe they're holding on to a burn spell for plow here. Could be. If that's the case, I could Monument first to give Plow to extra toughness so they can kill it with, let's say, a Scorching Dragonfire. Their other card might include a Ember Cleave, although it feels like they would have just cast it instead of bumping Weasel back. So, I think it makes sense to play it safe, even though we gave up on the dream of an early Plow activation. We also have Faceless Haven that could crew plow. My opponent had a stomp instead. And runs out to Giants. And hits us for one. Alright, we'll scry. Or do I scry? Probably don't have to since we'll have all the mana in the world with Monument to just draw instead. So it's finally time for Ox to crew, I believe. And then... What else do we do? I guess we can animate Crawling Barons. Am I at risk of dying to an Amber Cleave on the way back? Um, I guess it's not impossible. Twelve... Gonna gain three. Yeah, maybe it's safer to keep the Crawling Barons home. Hit for eight, gain three. And then we'll use that mana for birth. Plus, can I do anything else? I guess not if we want to keep Crawling Barons active. Alternatively, we could have drawn with Tome, but this seems fine. I guess never mind, now that we have a land drop, I can still draw. Another plow. Um, I wouldn't be able to crew that one. But I guess gaining two off monument means I'm pretty unlikely to die on the way back. Sure. And then next turn we can crew double plow. Can still put two counters on barons, just won't be able to block with it. So not that to an Ember Cleave. And our opponent's very much dead on the way back. So could have attacked with Plow a little bit sooner maybe, but we played it safe. And we still managed to get there. So animate maybe Faceless Haven. Crew one of the Plows. Crew the other one. And Crawling Barons for a good measure. And that also gives us a mana to draw with Tome. Sweet. So, Mono Red. Reasonable matchup if we can find an early sweeper and follow it up with some plowing action. So we had some fun games today with our life and death control deck. You get some very lengthy, grindy games with some of the more controlling elements or sweepers, Ugin. But you sometimes get some quick games as well if you get an early plow plus giant ox. Although drawing the wrong half of the deck can sometimes be an issue. So it's not necessarily the most consistent control deck in existence. But it makes up for it by being a ton of fun. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.